Welcome back. Now, whilst we sit in our nice warm houses in front of the fire, Britain's birds are outside shivering and really feeling the cold. My next guest says we can do a lot to help them and is going to tell us now how to do that. Welcome, David Dominey, from the TV show Love Your Garden. Now, good to have you here. Um, how can we help these little fellas? Because generally the, the small birds, birds need all the help they can get. They can, and we think that, that birds are just about in spring and some of, you can hear them now in your yeah, garden. Yeah chief in a way and, the, and there's so many of them and they get so very hungry during the during the winter months because it's not just about the activity of flying around but it, it's keeping warm as well yeah so as much food that we can help supplement their diet outside yeah. you'll get more birds in and of course they pay you back in dividends the the, the, the closest we can get to free pets is, in our own yeah, garden fascinating to see as well so how could you, i mean the usual suspects are the ones that you can buy i take it absolutely you? uh these these seed uh, feeders that you hang up in trees or or, or on on holders uh, the likes around the house is one thing and they feed pretty well yeah. uh, the key thing to remember is there's some ground feeding birds as well things right. like little robins or, yeah. or even blackbirds so little trays like this that keep the food off the ground so it doesn't get too damp is good too and if you've now, got when you're doing this and uh, you keep it away from hedges because obviously cats can hide in the hedges is that the, is that the idea or is that positioning you're quite right keeping them away from areas that you've got um that are suitable hiding places for cats so in open spaces for birds is yeah. particularly good on these ground feeders right. or up in trees as well makes them a little bit further away okay. but if you've got one of these um, almost feeding stations or, or bird feeding houses yeah. some people just put the seed straight on the wood yeah. and of course they're just building as they put more seed on the top and okay. you know as a chef food yeah. hygiene is really important against salmonella and birds suffer from that too so I always feed using a, a plate or something similar yeah. when it's empty Empty it off, give it a wash, same and then rules put apply. It back. Yeah, exactly. exactly the same. And as well as those, you've got. I mean, I've seen in the in, in the shops as well. These fat balls. These are great for. Your fat balls do pretty well for, for a lot of birds during the winter months because yeah. it, it puts in a lot of protein and energy. And you can buy them and put them into these feeders. Or if you look at the RSPB, they actually put them into a to a coconut, something similar to that, and hang them up in the garden. But it's great to make your own, and it's yeah. a good activity, not only to save you a bit of money whilst doing it, but it's good for the kids as well, okay. certainly during the uh, We're going to attempt weekends. to make... I've never, I've never done this. I've been cooking for 26 years on television. I've never done this. So what, what do we need for a... For a, for a bird fat ball. For a bird fat ball. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure you've actually used all these type of ingredients before, but, but mealworm, for instance, is, yeah. a, is a key essential. And the birds, they'll go nuts for that. They'll love it. Okay. So, uh, first of all, it's a bit messy, so gloves, gloves on. on. OK. First thing you need to do is a little bit of lard. Right. And I take it it's lard, not butter, because lard... It doesn't melt so much then. That's right. Okay. It's outside. It's a binder, really. It's holding these ingredients together. Okay. And it is really messy. So I've got a mixture here. You can use some cereal. We've got some old bran here. But the, the, in addition to that, you can do things like muesli and whatever. That works. Um, I've got some seed as well. And yeah. there's lots of different sunflower hearts or the likes. That works pretty well. You can buy that in most uh, garden or pet retailers. Yeah. I've got some mealworm as well mixed in, which is a, another great ingredient. Some red Raisins and sultanas, yeah. and even cheese. Cheese? <laughs> you see, robins love cheese. Look at that. Right, OK. This is just a handful of whatever you want, then, That's right. So just, just get some seed, and you'll be surprised just how much this, uh, this lard will do. And then, and then smash it in. Try and mix together the, uh, the lard in with the ingredients that you've got, and be very generous about it. It's quite messy. It's not the type of thing that you'd be now, doing the, inside. Is there any don'ts that you put in here then, as well as the do's that you've got in here? There must be something that you want to steer well away from then, is it's it? It's really anything that's going to be dehydrating the birds. So anything right. with salt is a no-go. You know, salted nuts and things like that uh, is not. Um, some people try to put some food leftovers in, and you, you'd be better to use fresh material that's out and about, like cheese and, uh, and these dried ingredients. There yeah. you go, get in there. The robins are going to love that. Look at that. Fantastic. <laughs> you love it, Just bake it? this in the oven for 180 degrees, you sort it. There you go. And as you can see, it's starting to form into, yeah. uh, into a cohesive ball. But as you can see, we've put an awful lot, yeah, taken from here, here yeah, yeah. and it starts to be able to mould into something. And that's at the point where you really want to stop putting the ingredients okay. in. So what are we going to put this in, then? Well, there's, yeah. there's a couple of options. Pine cones are good. I've put a little bit of string on that. So if you pack a pine cone up, it, it, due to the nature when the, the cone's actually opened, it helps you... It all holds in. ..holds in, and it offers some support to the mixture that's about. And then give it a real 
And this is relatively inexpensive to do. Yeah. It's fun as well. And the difference it's going to make that. to your little... Nature's little... own. It's brilliant, that, isn't it? Well, you've got a bigger fat ball than me there, oh, James, it's... looking at that. Sorry, my life, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't just have to be there. You can also, you can also use yoghurt pots as well. Yeah. I'll put a little hole at the bottom of one of these here, and you can fill the bottom of that, and, of course, like a little bell, really. Yeah. Um, and then you can put that outside. It's always best, once you've done these, to put them in the fridge yeah. so they chill and hold together. But that way, the birds can land on the lip and go inside, and it's kept all dry within that. How fantastic is that? There we go. Alternatively, you can just grab a piece of string. And just pop it around the string? Yeah. And uh, just flatten part of it off, put the string into the middle there, and then just close it around the string and structure whatever shape you wish. And then in the fridge, chill it off and then hang that up. And it's packed with protein for the birds, which will help them live during the winter, yeah. keep themselves warm as well. And uh, it's a great deal of fun too. And talking and keep themselves warm, we're going to talk about bird houses now. And, and you've, you've done that, but you need somewhere to live. So That's right. Which uh, we set them up in the garden. So let's take a look. Talk us through this lot. Right. Now, this is an interesting subject that I, I, I thought I knew something about, but... I didn't, because I was reading up on this quite... So what are the do's and don'ts with, these, with the bird boxes? Well, there's quite a few. The, the secret is to try and get as many as you can in the garden. Don't put them close together, because they don't like neighbours too much. These are some old ones from my yeah. uh, garden. But what you normally get is different size entrances attract different birds. So this one here has, in fact, got three entrances uh, yeah. uh, uh, that you, you can use to put on the front. So yeah. this one here will house just sort of like uh, 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 normal sized birds... This one here is slightly smaller, so you can take that off and put it on the front. Yeah. Or you can take the whole thing off for robins. And this is an old one that I've got. It's a bit dirty inside. Have a look yeah. at that. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. It's a home, though, yeah. It is a home. Yeah. So uh, what you do is, um, at the beginning of, of August, right the way through to the end of January, is a good time to clean them out. Now, this is the only time, because it says that it's illegal to clean it other other times of the year. Yeah, you don't want to be going in there when birds are either looking for homes uh, or, or are nesting themselves. So it's yeah. usually safer during that time. And it's just really, you know, hot water, boiling water on the inside, no detergents, no chemicals, just yeah. like that as a clean out, and then put it back into, uh, into, into position. Here's some new ones that we've got here. Yeah. So the secret is, is clean out the ones that you've already got up there during this time of year. Yeah. And then if you're buying new ones, it's great to get them sighted now. So they more or less get themselves bedded into the garden before okay. the season and birds work out where they are. But trying to put as many as you can in and around your home and sight them uh, not against the prevailing wind. So yeah. they're a little bit more sheltered. Up a little bit as well, so predators like cats and whatever can't get in. Yeah. And uh, with the ones with little holes, you can put them in clear spaces. But robins are a bit different. They like to hop once branch, two branch, and then they go in. So nestle these in a hedge or by a tree where there's a few branches to aid them get into home. And you'll be able to see this. It's quite important because the RSPB is running a, a survey this month as well. That's right. On the 26th and 28th, it's a great British bird count, and it's their 40th year doing it. And it's a marvellous opportunity to everybody in the family to get involved in counting the birds you yeah. see from your own garden. And we go from the basic ones... That, I love this. This, uh, this is the technical, technically advanced one. This is, this is ace. Look this at is, this. Because there's a camera actually in it, and it's looking right down, so you can spot the birds when they've actually <laughs> found there's a nest getting in, yeah. building the nest having the babies too, but you are watching nature, so anything can happen. Yeah, exactly. So you're going you're gonna to leave one of these at, at the house. Uh, not this one, obviously, but so you're going to hang something else up. So I'll put one up for you, if you like. Hang whatever you want. It's brilliant. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. How cool is that? There you go. Now, up next, it's pudding time. A sticky toffee pudding roulade with ice cream. That's on the menu. I'll see you in a few minutes. That's brilliant, that. Love it. I love this.